I did it. I finally figured out how to get my animation tree. Animations are now playing. And yeah, let's get to the intro. Hello, internet people. David here, and this is day 12 of my game development journey. I figured out animation trees, the animation player, as well as animated sprites, all in 3D. So I'll show you what I did, and I'll show you the problem I ran into, because odds are you're probably running into something similar if you're looking for videos with this title, which I think I'm going to title something like Godot Animation Tree Problems? Okay, let me give you a, a rundown of what I have set up at the moment. I have two nodes, an anim eyes and an anim body. These are animated sprite 3D nodes. I have an animation tree of animation node state machine, as well as an animation player. And what I ended up running into was I have this animation player set up to do specific animations. At the moment, I just have a walk animation as well as an idle animation. And here's kind of what those animations would look like. Here's the walk animation and here is the idle animation. And then I have this animation tree that right from the get go, it should just go to the idle animation. So as soon as my game loads up, this idle animation should be playing. And here we go. You can see it's loaded up. That animation is playing. If I am moving, I should play this animation, as you can see here. And if you want to test out your different states, you can just hit the play button. And I guess I'll show you how I've set these up. These right here are blend space 2D. They're blend space 2D nodes. And inside here, I just have my one animation, which is idle. And I just put it in all four quadrants at one. So you can see the coordinates zero, negative one, one zero, etc. So you can do the same thing. And on the condition of my character walking, it should move over to the walk state, which also has my walk animation right here, which is the same animation you'll see under the same name in my animation player. And that's important. You want your animations that are in those blend space 2Ds to align up with the animations you see in the animation player. Like, I think that just happens by default anyhow, as long as you set your animation player right here. So what was happening was in my GD script, I have this update animation parameters um, function that gets called pretty much every tick. This is what the delta is. I think this underscore process gets called like every tick or every frame. It goes in there and just updates parameters. And what I've done is for idle, if my velocity of my character is zero, it's vector 3.0 because it's a 3D world. Um, it's going to play the idle animation or at least move into the idle state. If I'm walking, aka my velocity is not zero, then it'll move me to the walk state. It should play my walk animation. And if I hit the swing button, I should be in the attack state down here. And then there's blend positions that also need to be updated to know which animation I am playing. This isn't really necessary. And quite frankly, I'm probably going to rework this animation tree because I really don't have different animations between my blend states. All four of these positions are the same. And what I think some people do is they'll have a sprite where if they're walking forward, you'll see the back of their character. If they're walking to the left, you'll see the left side of their character, the right side of their character, something like that. For me, all my animations are the same. You know, I just have idle. Idle is always the same. There's no idle left. There's no idle forward. There's no idle backwards. Nothing that corresponds to WASD. I think in my animation tree, I could have just done add animation and then just made that the node and then it just plays it. But I did the blend space 2D route. But here's the problem I ran into. Despite all my code being accurate, but here's the problem I ran into. Despite all my code being accurate, wasn't actually working properly. Every guide I ever saw showed that you change this to enable, but I think maybe they had code to like progress it to idle. I don't know. For some reason, I don't think my state machine here was ever leaving the start. And it's because this transition path needed to be on auto. So I just switched it to auto, no condition, it moved to idle. And then my idle animation started working in game. Um, and this took me like 
three days of misery trying to figure out what exactly is going on here you know i'm sitting here typing up like print statements being like did it enter the idle state and it looks like it was um or at least these conditions were true but um it just wasn't progressing and what i think also needed to happen was all these transition paths i also changed to auto the only ones i haven't tested out at the moment are the attack animations because I want to automatically go in there, but I don't want to be able to go back to idle or walk until the end of the animation plays. So that's the next thing I'm working on is my attack animations. And what's going to happen is the whole attack animation is going to play. And probably in my animation player, I am going to set up kind of like a direction. I think while the animation is playing, I do want my character to kind of inch forward a little bit, like just move on attack. Uh, maybe that's something I do in the animation player. Maybe that's just something I do in code. If you are having issues with your animation tree and you're not entering states or your animations aren't playing, make sure that your animation player is set. Make sure that your transition paths are set to auto because that's what I had to do. I don't know what the difference is between auto and enabled. I should read up on that, but auto seemed to be key for me. And then make sure in your blend space 2Ds that you are also setting the right animation with the same name that is in your animation player. And then also make sure that you are setting up conditions and actually, you know, performing the conditions in code as such. One thing I noticed while editing this video, I never specified or mentioned that I had all of my animations both in my animation player as well as my blend space 2D node set to discrete. So I'll show you what that looks like. So in the animation player, you can set your animations to discrete right here with these three green lines. And you're gonna wanna do that for, I think, all of your tracks. Not sure on that one. That's just how I've done it. And then on the animation tree, these blend space um, points right here where it says blend, I've also set this to discrete. And I don't know if that matters or not, but it's just what I've done and how I've gotten this animation to work in my game. Uh, my animations probably aren't as complicated as most people's, but this is how I got it working. So I'm hoping that helps you out as well. Um, one thing that I've done to cheat a little bit, and maybe some people can appreciate this, is I'll show you in my game here. While my character is moving, if I'm heading to the right, my character's... Okay, you can see the walk animation. My guy's bouncing up a bit more. If I stand still goes to the idle animation. But if I move to the left, my character's eyes go to the left. If I move to the right, they go to the right. And all I'm doing there is just flipping on the horizontal axis. I think this is a characteristic of your animated sprite 3D. Right here is a field flip H. So that's all I'm doing is I'm just toggling this on and off. And I'm doing the same thing for my body because I have separated out my eyes and my body. Um, and there's just a specific design that I'm going for there where I might want to swap out my eyes with a different set of eyes that are animated differently. And um, instead of recreating, you know, a whole new character with that specific eye set, um, I just wanted to modularize that a little bit. My dogs are barking behind me. And then the other thing I did is if I move in either up or down on the Z axis, which in my 3D world is forward and backwards, I make the eyes disappear so it looks like you're looking at the back of my character. And then I also have it flip left and right still so you see kind of the shadow. And this kind of just makes it look like I'm moving forward. And then if I'm moving backwards, there you go, you see the eyes again. And that's just a little trick that I did to make it seem like I have more animations than I actually do. Um, by just toggling visibility off animations. I think the next thing I'm going to do, just for those that have been following this series, is add my weapon on the back of my character. And then, I don't know if I'm gonna pull it out in front. I think maybe the weapon's gonna be in the back. I won't have it in the hands. And then on attack, you'll see it in the hand and do a swing animation, etc. So I'm working on getting this little sword in the game at the moment, and I'm gonna be working on my attack animations. That's all I got for an update for you guys. Thanks, if you made it this far into the video, thank you very much. Please consider liking and subscribing if, you're, if you haven't already. And um, we'll see how this nutty dungeon game progresses. Thank you very much for all those that have helped me in the Discord. There's some really helpful comments. And I'm just going to read some of those out. 
Here's some of the comments from the uh, last video where I was really frustrated. The video was titled, How the F do I animate this? And it was really just me running into issues with my animation tree and my transitions not being set to auto. There's some good tips here by Pretend Coden. He said, while it is easier to have individual sprite sheets at first, it becomes cumbersome once you have a lot of different animated things. If you have a bunch of different sprites you're managing, like different objects, then each one is loaded into memory. So if your peanut has eight animations, that's eight sprite sheets with memory overhead for each. So in this case, my peanut just has two animations, idle and walk, and then in code, I kind of create the walk in forward or away from the camera animation, as well as I think my walk and my idle actually are the same animation. I just ended up slowing it down. Let's see if I got my peanut reference. Yeah, it's the same animation. I actually ended up getting rid of idle. I just ended up using the walk animation and slowing it down. So I kept that the same. So at the moment, just one sprite sheet. So I'm not too worried about memory overhead at the moment. All that said, we live in the age of pocket supercomputers, so you'll likely not encounter slowdowns because of a bunch of low resolution pixel art. And that's also true in this game that I'm making at the moment. I think the assets are like, let's see. Um, the assets are, oh, hello. Thanks for the coffee. Oh, thank you. Cheers. You okay if I drink or are we Well, I'm just in the middle of recording, but yeah. Come sit down, go make some pixel art. <laughs> yeah, go work on some pixel art. I'm just uh, wrapping up this video here. And that's okay. I'm not cutting any of this. This is staying in the video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, I've gotten lazy with my editing. <laughs> I don't wanna I don't wanna spend like two hours editing um uh, when I could be spending two hours making the game. Uh, okay, what was I trying to show here? I just got horribly distracted there. Horribly! You're the worst! Why would you distract me so much? I came to work on a, a special character for you. I know you did. Thank you very much. Um, what was I trying to show? Oh yeah, so right here, 24 kilobits. KIBs, like, pretty tiny. Here's my sprite sheet at the moment. Eyes. Um, oh, I do actually have a separate animation, the look animation. Ah, something else to work on. I completely forgot I made this animation. Um, even though I've shown it in like eight videos, I might have memory issues. I'm so sorry, guys. Ziggity Zeke says game dev is as challenging as it is rewarding. Keep at it, bro. Thank you very much for the encouragement. I appreciate you, buddy. Zerg12 just says, don't worry, man. Just trust the process. The process can be frustrating at times. It can be overwhelming, but we figured out how animation trees work. So thank you, Zerg12. Have you tried asking AI for help? There's got to be a tutorial somewhere. You know what? I never thought about using AI. I don't always trust AI as a good source of information. However, I did ask AI how to set up stacked animations using an, using an animation tree and the animation player. And it actually gave me some good things to review. Um, it did, however, not... Um, it did, however, not solve my problem. Um, with that flag being set to auto over enabled as well. I'll give a shout out to some of the people in the discord Thank you the Punisher. What in the world is going on here? Thank you Tekra and thank you The name is blocked out because I got streamer mode enabled here. So let's turn that off Thank you heroic cookie. Thank you very much for the guides This was a good uh, guide right here how to stack animations in Godot 4.2 in 15 minutes by coding quest and maybe in this video they did actually have the flag set properly i might have just missed it it's just something that i might have missed in some of the animation tree videos that i was watching but as always thanks everyone for the help i finally got animations working my game is coming more and more alive um, i'm really enjoying seeing my character come more and more alive and now i want to get it swinging a sword around so we can start working on some attack animations and actually start attacking some enemies so that's what I'm working on next. You know, as always, love and peace, peace and love. I'm David. See you guys in day 13. Are we on day 13 already? I think day 13. I think day 13. So, high anyhow, five. high five. Adios. Why did I end it that way? Anyhow, peace out.